uh, to others that can uh, view it afterwards. But we wanted to take a moment to uh, present our thoughts and ideas on markets uh, and on uh, new crop uh, potential as you make planning decisions as uh, we get to spring out there somewhere uh, and uh, look forward. And so we have uh, uh, all merchants online here uh, representing our Pulse division, our, uh, of course, you know, Sean and our seed operations and then uh, our oil seeds as well as, uh, as our wheat uh, merchants. And uh, uh, happy to field any questions anytime through the, uh, through the process or after. Uh, just you can unmute and chime right in or uh, use that chat box. Either way, we're happy to uh, answer any questions. We're here to, to provide the information for you guys. So let us know what we can do. Um, with that, I'll let uh, Sean talk, uh, uh, start it off and talk about our seed programs. Thanks, Kurt. So here at Tiber, we, we do a lot of your pulse crops, mainly into your Aragorn and Eugenies here, and we'll pull up uh, green feed varieties and we'll pull up a little screen here and get it fired up. Can everybody see that? Yep, yep, we got you, Sean. All right. So for the Montana locations, we have Aragorn and Jenny green peas, the banner peas, uh, pea and garb inoculant, green lentils, and that goes from uh, Viceroy to your layer types to your Avondales, Richleys, and Pardina lentils, which are a small brown lentil. Um, I don't know that we'll run too many programs in your guys' area, but if you guys have any questions about that, give me a shout. For seed treat this year, uh, we're using Syngenta Seed Care products. Um, that'll include, also be including BSF's new wireworm insecticide, Taraxa. That's for wireworm control in cereal crops. Um, and right in line with that, with our pulse crops, we're gonna run Cruiser insecticide with uh, usage rates up to like 1.2 ounces. We're getting good control on, on pea leaf weevil larva and pea leaf weevil. Um, on the left is a picture of untreated. And you can see there's not that many nodules. And on the right, you have a treated version that has a pile more nodules thanks to that treatment, keeping them larva from robbing you of all that return that you're that you're supposed to be leaving in the ground. Uh, here's another picture of it, just showing the benefit of that cruiser application on a pulse crop. Um, and that's kind of my short presentation. So if you guys have any questions on what we do here at Tiber and what we can offer you, um, whether it be from seed, growing it, um, anything, all the above, feel free to reach out to me me anytime and we'll uh we'll get you handled so i think with that we're going to run over to ryan you take it in next yeah i'll go we'll go pulses next Okay, my name is Ryan Van Pevenage, Pulse Merchant here at Columbia Green. Kind of go through some of the generals of the Pulse market, what we're currently seeing, what we kind of advise um, for new crop and what kind of our thoughts are on new crop as well as a little bit of old crop. So kind of most all of you guys know, as you've kind of met Sean and know a good amount about us, um, we have really focused in our processing facilities. Um, the closest one to you guys would be Tiber, of course. And then I think Meriwether is gonna be a great outlet you guys run a lot of your pulses that's, that's kind of a convenient location for you um, as well as kind of the farm farm programs that we'll look into something we kind of really dial in is quality um, ability to color sort clean size package cranes and pulses for customers needs all over the world um, these allow us to take the amazing quality that you guys have and fine tune it clean it and then put it out to customers so we can really be proud of the products that you guys grow um, we're Brand recognition is something that's really important to us one bag at a time. Uh, despite the overall size and scope of the market, consumers around the world eat with their eyes and are very conscious of quality. Um, 
our focus is to have consistent product delivered to the end user, no matter the plant or the product um, or how it's packaged. A big thing to keep in mind is we don't control the market, rather the market influences how we deliver your product. Um, so products that we push or varieties that we push are oftentimes based on what we see in the market, not necessarily for our own specific needs, but what we feel is gonna be best to be able to market um, for give us the best advantage to give you the most competitive pricing and movement on all products. Kind of jumping right into field peas, kind of ending stocks as we see here. Um, stocks have definitely tightened up a little bit. Um, we do expect them to be fairly tight going into next year as well. I think as we look at pea stocks, I think that we see yellow pea stocks really tightening up where green peas um, have quite a bit more length throughout kind of the, the system, especially on the grower side as, uh, as there was huge yields last year that really kind of dampened the green pea market where yellow peas is where things are really tightened up due to Chinese buying as well as pet food demand kind of stepping up. When we kind of look at the market scope in general, we've seen pet food growth kind of as I talked about step up this year. Um, it's been slightly challenged with DCM, but we've kind of seen that the demand has outpaced some of the slowdown of DCM. Um, Section 32 demand for split peas has really helped pricing, helped support green pea pricing a little bit, um, and yellow pea pricing has been heavily supported by the government buying. Uh, raising pricing in corn and soybeans have given strength to the pea market. Um, a lot of this due to Chinese demand. Green pea has been lagging in North America values wise, um, seeing green pea values even below yellow peas in certain areas, just because of the large yields um, and the demand being down a little bit where yellow peas demand has been kind of outpacing uh, the yield that we saw this last year. Chinese demand does remain, or tariffs do remain on all pulses, um, but a lot of this is being waived by the government buying. Um, India quotas and tariffs in kind of in effect and no news on the horizon for any changes um, in peas especially. Kind of look at green peas, the uses for green peas, canning, splitting, um, rehydrating our small pack, food aid, gov tenders, and pet food. Um, so the really important aspect to look at as far as green peas go is the ability to can. Um, and we know that kind of Hampton is something you guys are really found that works well for your operations. And we're really working on finding several different homes to market all of all of the Hampton acres for next year. Um, we're working on getting it tested at some of the large canners throughout the world in hopes that it will be approved for canning. And that will really help the movement um, if there is no Chinese demand were to shut off um, or our pricing does not support uh, pet food. Otherwise, without canning markets, it may be difficult to move large amounts of green peas and they may be close to the yellow pea values. Um, so I think this will be a good determining factor in kind of the, the value capacity of the Hampton green pea. So we kind of look at world lentil ending stocks. We've seen the last kind of this year and the end of the coming year, really tight stocks. Um, and we kind of expect that to, to carry into next year with, uh, with demand has been really strong. COVID has really helped lentil demand and kind of India buying as well. Um, so we'll be kind of closely watching any buying there as India buying with close stocks like this can have a large effect on the market. But I would kind of expect um, new crop lentils to sit probably around 20 bucks plus or minus um, a dollar or two, I think is a good indication for looking at new crop lentils. Um, demand has been very solid this year. We've seen at the supply side um, relatively tight this year because of demand throughout Europe and South America has been really strong. Um, the Indian rabbi crop has shown average yields from current news, which is good price support um, for green lentils, especially just because India, an average crop won't entirely feed their people, so they will need to buy more. Um, Viceroy Larry premiums continue um, to be out there due to the lack of India buying. So India buys mainly richly, but if India isn't there to buy, it can be difficult to market all the richly and the vice rate and the layered um, premiums into the process market still maintain. Uh, the European buyers have coverage for most of the current crop while South America is still showing signs of, signs of demand. But um, overall, the kind of aspect I would expect that uh, stocks will remain kind of on pace. We're ahead of pace and I think that now we'll kind of go back to on pace or a little below pace for the remainder of this crop year. So we kind of look at chickpea ending stocks. We see things really starting to tighten up a little bit here um, over the next year 
I think it was kind of more acres have gone away from chickpeas that we've seen end buyers kind of get their fill and begin to need to buy more after um, they kind of have loaded up in these low price levels. So we'll kind of wait to see where, uh, where the chickpea market goes in the next year. Overall, still working through large stocks domestically and internationally. I think we do start to see the point where we see hope coming. Um, quality was good this year, raising values for kind of off grades. We've seen that the larger caliber Sierra and Nash are holding premiums to other other types of chickpeas. Um, kind of to talk on these, um, Sean and I have been kind of working on some matrix to working on size. And it's found that even with some of these larger varieties, that even if you have to buy seed, it oftentimes the math will say that it still pays out better because of the size premium you get in it versus a bin run Orion or Frontier. So that's something that Sean can kind of get passed off to everybody and we can kind of work with you to find kind of the best chickpea if you have interest in doing that. Um, chickpea protein flour demand is intriguing, but I would still say it's a few years away. Uh, so kind of we'll see where that goes. Kind of India Pulse is always kind of an important thing to watch as they buy a lot of product. Um, and it's kind of one of the largest importers, well as one of the largest producers. Um, so we see kind of their level right around 25,000, 25 million metric tons. So we kind of right in there. So as we watch the rabbi crop, if it's a little lower, we could expect a few more imports from them out of the US and Canada. Kind of always as a reminder, to watch glyphosate levels, um, all pesticides. We've seen European buyers really start to crack down on this and kind of feels like South America is starting to do a bit more testing and uh, kind of really dial into this as well. So make sure you're following the label, working with Sean if you have any questions on things, um, anything you can do to get your glyphosate levels down, always good and always helpful. Um, kind of Sean will have this for you guys, but kind of the seed matrix that we kind of kind of use to help you guys and hope that you guys use kind of can plug new crop pricing in, plug some of your inputs in and kind of really see what it's going to yield, um, yield and best return for you. So if you guys need this or have any interest in it to be able to plug and play, Sean can definitely help you um, or Mike as well. Steve, kind of any of those guys up there can definitely help you guys get this and kind of go from there. Other than that, that's kind of about all I have for today on the poll side. So I appreciate you guys jumping on. If there's kind of any follow-up questions, um, definitely feel free to ask or get in touch with Sean and he kind of, we can work with you and, and get any of this information through Sean, Mike, Steve, um, any other CGI represent, representatives that you guys talk to. So thank you for your time. Hey, Ryan. Mm -hmm. May want to touch base on, uh, you know, if you are a farmer in Glacier County with our Meriwether facility and our Tiber, what would work best for us, for them to raise? Um, you know, what, what product's gonna move faster? What, what's our plans with Meriwether? What are we gonna focus on handling as far as pulses? I think that Meriwether kind of really looking for what's gonna move fast and stay fluid. I think yellow peas are gonna be the best answer. Um, Meriwether works really well into export homes as well as pet food homes into California and other directions. So I think if you're looking for something that has really strong movement um, and some really good upside and price support this year, I think yellow peas are a really good option in this area. Um, lentils are good look. Um, I think kind of Viceroy's Richley is always good. I think something else to look into would be red lentils. Red lentils have really good uh, kind of fluidity to them. There's a lot of times where you can kind of push red lentils red lentil into the market kind of all the time, similar to yellow peas where the movement's really good on them. So I think that if you're really looking for a product that's gonna move quick, that has kind of upside in pricing this year, that red lentils as well as yellow peas would be good. Um, green peas kind of maybe has slightly more price support potentially, depending on acres and quality, but uh, because green peas, unless they're yellow pea value, need to work into more processing markets, the movement on this is a little bit slower. But I think great option for, uh, pushing through Mike and Meriwether would just going to be kind of your, your richly viceroy lentils, a um, little bit of red lentils, and then yellow peas will stay very fluid on. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate the, uh, the update there. Um, if there's no questions on the, on the poll side, uh, go ahead and move on to uh, Justin Beach, who will uh, talk to us about the wheat market. 
Thanks, Kurt. Uh, as you said, I'm going to touch base on grain markets here. I'm going to pass it over to Sam Odin. He's on the spring wheat and oiled seed desk. We'll jump right into it here. So I want to talk first about bullish and bearish factors. Um, right now, we're watching uh, meal and feed demand rise, and it's, it's continuing to stay strong for row crops out of the U.S., we're monitoring a tight U.S. bean and corn stocks to use ratio. Uh, we're also looking at dry weather in RG uh, and to a lesser extent Brazil. Some recent rains have certainly subsided some concerns, but uh, it's still something that needs to be tracked. Um, also, Chinese domestic cash markets are very firm. Reserve auction prices are significantly higher than global prices. And uh, as of recently, we're looking at winter kill concerns in the Western Plains, uh, as well as Montana. And then we saw the uh, floating rate Russian grain tariff get enacted here as well. On the bearish side, um, we're looking to ration demand through high prices. That's kind of the, the function of these, these rising markets at the moment for row crops. Uh, also important to note that domestic and global wheat carryouts are going to be record amounts this year. And we're also watching ethanol grind margins, um, primarily due to the impacts of COVID that could curtail grind rates. And then uh, finally, South American crop conditions seem to be improving with scattered showers past in the past month here. So now I want to move into spring wheat and, and winter wheat specific. Um, futures feel pretty range bound. We're going to continue to follow row crops here. Um, nearby corns trading 565. That's going to, you know, definitely provide a strong price buoy. And Chinese demand is going to have to continue to be monitored as well. Uh, to me, it feels like a two step forward, one step back type market. I think uh, we go back up and, and get into the 680s, test those levels, um, but it, it looks like it's going to be a slow grind here. Another factor that we're watching is burdensome to loose stocks that are keeping board carries wide. Now you can see we got about 25 million bushels in this diluted system, which should keep calendar spreads um, very, very wide. Uh, now to touch on exports, we're up considerably year on year, pushing 8% ahead of the five-year average. That's been supported by buying from the Philippines, Japan, Taiwan, and China. Um, currently, we're seeing spring wheat demand off the PNW firm, and uh, winter wheat demand has certainly been rationed here in the old crop. And it's important to note, um, you know, these price spreads are largely a function of a considerably looser balance sheet in hard red spring than hard red winter. But with that being said, we're definitely making a story looking forward uh, with a large an anticipated slash to spring wheat acres. As far as winter wheat, uh, exports have been fantastic this year. China's been a player. We're uh, nearly 10% above last year's pace, led by Mexico, Nigeria, and Japan, and considerably stronger exports year on year to China and Brazil. Um, you know, the market's continuing to talk winter kill and soil moisture conditions. Uh, we, you know, we saw similar concerns last year at this time uh, in Montana and worse conditions in the Southern Plains. We ended up with a record Montana uh, yield and we, we saw a solid crop in the South as well. So we're gonna continue to look for those late rains. So, and that's all I have um, for now. I will pass it on over to Sam Odin. All right, uh, thanks again for joining. My name is Sam Odin. I'm another merchant um, here based out of the Portland office. Um, as Justin mentioned, the, the overall uh, price story for, uh, for grains has been bullish and um, a rising tide lifts all boats uh, with minor oil seeds included, such as flax and canola. Um, I just wanted to take a second to uh, talk a little bit about some of our programs for this coming crop year. Um, as shown on the slide, uh, we have an $11.75 a bushel delivered Haver Act of God program. Um, or if you're more interested in something FOB Farm, um, please reach out. Just as a general indication, it would likely be uh, roughly 50 cents off of where we are in Haver. So um, if a FOB Farm Flex program is something that you have interest in, please reach out to um, any of us after the call and we can uh, 
uh, get a custom made program for you. Um, the Act of God is on the first 10 bushels uh, to the acre with first and last right of refusal on remaining productive and the shipment period is on buyer's call, um, harvest through March of 2022. Um, moving on to canola, um, our partner Montana Specialty Mills in Great Falls is rolling out um, the, uh, this program here. Um, with a carry structure into uh, their, their bids, starting at harvest, going through the summer. Um, for delivery into Great Falls, uh, they're at 9.75 a bushel. January through April, buyer's call is $10 with May, July at uh, 10 and a quarter. Um, there are a few different delivery points that we have uh, mentioned on here. Um, if they're more attractive to you or similar to um, flax, if running something fob farm uh, is something you have interest in, please reach out and uh, we can work out some um, details and, and build a fob program for you around, uh, around these delivered bids. Um, the varieties available. Um, for this program are all clear field. Uh, they're Brett Young, 5545, 5105, and the 5125. Um, if you go to the next slide, Justin. Um, the 5105 uh, and 5545 are uh, older varieties that are being phased out. And the 5125 um, boasts better shatter resistance um, and is the newest variety from Brett Young. Um, there are a few other varieties that uh, are approved um, non-GMO that MSM will accept. Um, if you have any questions about those, either myself or Sean uh, would be able to, to help you out with any questions you may have. Uh, go to the next slide. In addition to the flax and canola programs, uh, MSM is offering the uh, um, $30 100 weight delivered Conrad yellow mustard program. Um, it is also an act of God with the first 800 pounds to the acre. Um, it's on buyer's call from harvest through July of 2022. Um, and the overage uh, is last right of refusal for Montana specialty mills. So if you have any questions on this, please reach out. Um, I think that's all that I have today on, um, on oil seeds. Um, I can pass it back to Kurt for closing comments. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, <clears throat> just want to reiterate, you know, for everyone that was able to join and um, anybody that will be viewing this as a recording, uh, you know, we're happy to, <coughs> excuse me, take any questions, answer any questions we can. Uh, please reach out to your local manager or, uh, or uh, anybody else, Sean can put you directly in contact with us. Uh, you know, we're here to provide the, the service. We want to earn your business and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to serve you. Uh, Brian, anything you'd like to add? No, just, just want to uh, thank you for the guys that are on and we'll be watching the recording, you know, we wouldn't have a business if we didn't have you. So we want to build better relationships. We want to keep your relationships. So don't ever hesitate to pick up the phone and ask questions. Um, if you need more guidance, marketing advice, any kind of service that, you know, we want to take pride in as a company as being the best service company that, you know, provide anything for you. So don't be afraid to ask. And once again, thank you for your business. Thanks, Brian. And thanks everyone for uh, joining, participating. Uh, look forward to seeing you all in, uh, in person uh, sometime this spring or summer. <clears throat>